This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education public meeting for January 3rd, 2023. Happy New Year and welcome to 12 Corners Middle School. This is the fourth of our uh, school visits that we do throughout the school year and we are excited to be in the TCMS library, a really bright and fun space. Uh, to begin with, and there's probably not a better way to begin any meeting or any year with the Brighton Believer Award, so I'll turn it over to Dr. McGowan. Thanks so much, Mr. Davis. Uh, as we've said before, but it bears repeating, the Brighton Believers Council selected nominees to receive Brighton Believers Award at their uh, previous meetings, and we have not forgotten about those. We continue to recognize folks at the beginning of each of our meetings for demonstrating our character traits of integrity, respect, responsibility, kindness, and self-control. These award winners are students, parents, teachers, and staff members, but are also open to parents, coaches, and community members. And the nomination, of course, is available on the website at bcsd.org. I'll refrain from uh, singing Aretha Franklin, who I think that Bill reminded us was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and clearly demonstrated respect, one of our bright minds. Uh, this evening's award winner that we're recognized is a uh, incredible teacher here at 12 Corners Middle School and does so much in our school community. If I could ask Jessica Padilla and uh, Susanna Ferries to come on up. Susanna recommended, nominated Jessica so that she can be thoroughly acknowledged uh, right up here. Jessica is a science teacher at 12 Corners Middle School. She was nominated by Heather Coles and Susanna Ferries, and thank you for coming tonight. They wrote, Jessica has dedicated countless hours to the Brighton Summer Arts Program, making it one of the most desirable summer programs for elementary school children across the entire Rochester community. Jessica treats each student in that program with respect and provides structure and a firm routine coupled with significant encouragement and fun. Mrs. Padilla is also one of the best teachers in the district. During seventh grade science, she uses current technology to keep the kids excited and engaged. Mrs. Padilla communicates consistently with parents and provides extra support and guidance. She is always available and follows up about interpersonal connections and concerns with the students. Most importantly, in the context of this award, Jessica Padilla commits herself fully to the Brighton community. She is an advocate for school and community opportunities for those living in Brighton. She is always kind and compassionate. She respects and embraces individual differences and has the rare gift of creating community among a variety of stakeholders. I will say to you that it has been a pleasure observing Jessica over the years as a teacher, as a person who invests herself in kids in the performing arts, not just during the summer, but during the year as well. Uh, puts on these incredible performances, choreographs those, and pours everything she has into it. But also has a knack as a professional of knowing when People need a note, a message, and seems to set out intentionally to brighten people's day. Thank you very much for all you do in our community. Jessica, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, thanks. You got to take home the actual award. So congratulations. You bet. And Dean's going to take our picture. Uh, you want all of them go left? Yeah, yeah. Up. Ready. Good. Congratulations, Jessica. Uh, hearing about our Brighton Believers Award recipients is, as I said before, a great way to start the meeting and, in this case, start the new year. Speaking of recognition, we are thrilled and proud to announce that Brighton Central School District Superintendent Dr. Kevin McGowan is one of four finalists for the AASA's, that's the School Superintendents Association, 2023 National Superintendent of the Year Award. This distinction honors school system leaders throughout the country who are making a positive difference in the lives of the students they serve, the staff they work with, as well as improving the safety and wellness of their school communities. Earlier this year, Dr. McGowan was selected by the New York State Council of School Superintendents as the New York State Superintendent of the Year. 
The 2023 National Superintendent of the Year will be announced during AASA's National Conference on Education on February 16th in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Christina, you shouldn't assume that everyone is familiar <laughs> with the award or the criteria, so I'll ask you to explain. Yes, of course I will explain. Uh, the National Superintendent of the Year program is now in its 36th year. The applicants were measured against the following criteria. Leadership for learning, creativity, and successfully meeting the needs of students in the school system. Communication, strength in both personal and organizational communication. Professionalism, constant improvement of administrative knowledge and skills, while providing professional development opportunities and motivation to others on the education team. Community involvement, active participation in local community activities, and an understanding of regional, national, and international issues. Dr. McGowan has done an outstanding job for Brighton, putting the needs of our students first, constantly connecting with staff and our entire community, and proactively taking on tough issues. Brighton has benefited from his always positive attitude, his daily focus on how schools can be better, and his collaborative approach with an equally outstanding leadership team and teaching staff. Dr. McGowan is more than deserving of this recognition, and we look forward to continuing to work with him and the entire BCSD team to create the best possible learning environment for our students, staff, and community. So on behalf of the school board and this entire community, congratulations Thank to you. Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, first of all, for reading that exactly how my mother wrote it. I'm sure she'd be very proud. But yeah, we emailed her too. I, there's no question in my mind about that. I, um, it happens because of everybody sitting in the back and our staff mm -hmm. who have closed gaps for kids. And uh, that is really what that's about. So I appreciate that, but more so I appreciate what has happened for kids in this district because of the amazing teachers, leaders, support staff, and parents, families, and kids in this district. Thank you very much. As is the case with every public meeting, we have the opportunity for public participation. If anyone is here for that public participation, I'd ask you to find Dan Goldman. Raise your hand, please, Dan, and submit your name, and then we'll invite you to the podium. Uh, I'm going to ask, and then if I pronounce this incorrectly, um, I'll ask to be corrected. Merrick Hazan? Marie Kazan, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, uh, a lot of the folks here, some of the folks here might know me as Mark Kazanov when I was uh, going to school here, um, had a couple teachers in the crowd and now Dr. McGowan. Um, yeah, I just wanted to propose an agenda item of talking through chat GPT and all the kind of advancements in AI that have happened over the last uh, month. Um, I know there's a lot of schools beginning to talk about how to implement tools like this into curriculum and so would love to have uh, more discussions with um, the Brighton school system on how to maybe implement this or even developing a task force over time to begin to integrate these AI tools um, into curriculum and even creating uh, educational tracks um, from anywhere from first grade all the way up through uh, graduation for, for folks. So yeah, thank you. For, wait, for a board member who might not be familiar with that, do you have suggested resources to just read up on that? Um, yeah, I have, uh, can definitely suggest resources, um, can send links uh, where appropriate, so please just give me uh, where you'd like for them to be sent, but based, yeah. If, if you send them to Dan Goldman, he could get them to us. I would really appreciate that, because I understood most of what you said, but not all of what you said. <laughs> I'm not good. being funny, it just, I just didn't, so I'd like definitely. to be smarter. A hundred percent, yeah, and um, I'm always happy to run a workshop. I run, like, educational workshops on some of these topics around the globe, so, um, yeah, always happy to hop in and uh, chat through. That's great. If you wouldn't mind, and it's great to see you, yeah, yeah. if you it's could well. connect with uh, Dr. Rio on the way out the door, I know that she'd probably love to spend some time talking about it from the curriculum instruction perspective. It's actually something internally we've been talking about, uh, particularly since mid-December when this became such a quick, hot topic. Definitely. Uh, I would love to learn more from you and uh, think about the direction that's going to go for us. Sounds good. Thank Thanks. you guys so Thank much. You. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank, Thank you very much. Anyone else for public participation? All right, we'll move on in the agenda. First, let's get an approval for tonight's agenda. Motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Moved by Sue. Second. Seconded by Eleanor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, approval of the minutes from the December 13th meeting. We've all had a chance to receive those minutes and, of course, review them. Are there any changes, edits, or anything else, to, uh, or uh, corrections, rather, to those minutes? 
Motion to approve the uh, minutes as written for the December 13th, 2022 meeting. Okay. Moved by Esther. Second. Seconded by Karen. All those in favor? Aye. Um, I did note in the beginning that we are in this beautiful TCMS library. We now have the opportunity to hear from Lou Alimo in regards to the TCMS facilities improvement plan update. We've been able to get an update on each of the schools as they go. So um, uh, grateful to be able to hear regarding TCMS. Lou Alimo. <laughs> and it appears that Danielle's going to supervise this presentation. So. <laughs> Well, thank you again for the opportunity to present. This is our fourth installment of presenting uh, the highlights from the 2017 Capital Improvement Plan, again, which was a uh, first phase of a multi-year um, capital investment plan, where we'll talk about uh, what we achieved in the 2017 phase, what we've subsequently achieved in 2001-2 capital project, 2002-2023 work that's um, pending with uh, SED approval right now. And then uh, Mrs. Evans will be able to talk about what her priorities are as, as relatively new principal to the building and her observations and what she'll be advocating for um, over her tenure with us here in Brighton. So this is a summary of what we achieved, uh, and Mrs. Edmonds will go through that in more detail. I'll just talk about, um, you know, kind of the mix of project scope that we were able to achieve. This is the area which is kind of the crown jewel of the pr plan uh, program for this particular phase. Um, again, Mrs. Evans will talk to that. But we tried to mix in a lot of the infrastructure. You'll see a fire alarm system. Uh, PA system, so some of our core systems as well as modernization of our of our facility. So with that, I'll have Mrs. Edmonds talk through um, what we achieved and what her observations are about the programmatic impacts. Thanks. So obviously you're in our bright and shiny library, and I think I've said this to you before, but years ago I had the opportunity to be on the interview committee for Mrs. Lambert, our librarian, and I'll never forget that when we interviewed her, the thing that made her stand out from all of the other candidates is that her goal and dream was for the library to be the central hub of the building. Mm -hmm. um, and she's truly achieved that and only continues to do more with that, not only with the uh, collaboration that she does with all of the teachers across all curricular areas, but in terms of what she's brought into this space itself. You can't see it right now, but on any given day, there are puzzles out. There are huge coloring sheets for students to be out at and, and coloring and relaxing. So it's a place where students come oftentimes when they need a break, when they need to decompress and just kind of turn the academic world off for a moment. Um, we have our reading nooks in the back where you will often see students just curled up with a book reading by themselves. Uh, we have areas for students to collaborate. And then, of course, while all of that is going on, we also have classes and students working on assignments. And there's kind of a little bit of everything for all of our students in this place. It has begun become a hub. I was in with sixth graders all day today, and one of the questions I asked them was, how many of you have had time to go down to our library? And every kid raised their hand with a huge smile on their face. Like, they love being in this space. Part of it is the colors. Um, and the brightness of it and the nice new furniture, but also I think the, the atmosphere that has also been created with Mrs. Lambert um, and our TAs has really helped facilitate that. So it's no longer, do you remember like when we were in school, you went to the library, you weren't allowed to make a sound <laughs> at all. You had to get your book, do what you needed to do and get out. That It's not like that anymore. Everybody is welcome and it's a place that students want to be for whatever reason they need to be here at, at the time. So it's really has become the, the core and I'm, I'm super proud of, of what Mrs. Lambert's been able to do in here. Alongside of that, just uh, behind the windows over there, we have our new library classroom, which is actually not called the library classroom anymore because it's really become a, a multi-purpose room for us. We have a lot of meetings in there, but we also have our counselors will do uh, counseling group sessions in there with students. We use it as our restoration room after their student conflict. We do um, a lot of peer mediation in that room. Um, it's really uh, served us well, especially in times of, I don't want to say crisis, it's not the good word, but we had um, 
a big leak in a heating pipe today in Jen Kramer's room. And so we said, okay, why don't you just go into room 303 and teach today? Um, so it's offered us flexibility as we need it. Uh, we have continued goals for this classroom to become more of a space for uh, social work and um, social emotional learning support. So it's continued to be in development, but the great furniture, uh, the brightness of the room, the technology that's in the room has allowed us to use it in, in multiple different ways. Our art rooms have gotten a facelift as well. And what I can say to you from, you know, having been in there years prior is that uh, it just feels more organized and there's a sense of, you know, kind of safety and order to the classroom. We have much more storage than we've had before. We've got multiple um, learning points. You can see with the multiple TVs that allow students to see instruction and modeling as it's going on. Um, it, it's, you used to kind of walk in the room and it just felt like there was a lot of stuff hanging out because there wasn't a place for everything. So all the additional cabinetry and countertops have offered some greater space and um, some brighter floors and new workstations have also allowed students to just feel comfortable. One of the things that I've said before is that when I walk into Ms. Hartke's room, which is the one we're looking at right now, it's like you walk in and there's just this sense of calm. You know, and I think that a lot of that has to do with the instructor for sure, but I think the space also helps facilitate that. And the fact that we can have people in different areas of the room still accessing instruction from wherever they are also helps with that. The same thing goes for one of our new science classrooms. This is room 463, which was not outfitted as, a, as one of our regular science classrooms like all of the others. It didn't have uh, lab stations and lab tables, and it didn't have the sinks and, and all of the necessary equipment to carry out the labs that they need to in uh, Science 8 and Earth Science. So um, you can see that we've got kind of the flexible chairs that can go up and down. We've got those solid tables that offer a great workspace as a desk, but also function for labs and you know pouring chemicals onto rocks and things like that. Uh, we've got, again, the central uh, instructional station where students um, can be on either side of it and see what the teacher is doing right on that, that uh, central area. So it's offered some flexibility to the classroom some different space and again as i said before just allow students to be in multiple points in the room and not missing out on what's going on our pe area this used to be our weight room if you were in there years ago you remember the smell it's probably still stuck in your in your nose um, but it's nice to say now that it doesn't have that so this is an area you can see there are rowing machines in there it's a multi-purpose area it gets used for yoga it gets used for rowing machines it gets used for um, many of our pe units and it's just right across from our fitness center where we've got some new equipment um, but nice solid flooring and um, can support the, the academic units that our students are doing. I know that Mr. Wasserman uh, and the other PE teachers are age appropriately working through kind of CrossFit mentality with some of the students and this equipment helps them to do that safely. So it's really been a nice upgrade. It's pretty bright down there too. Um, and because it's all open, it, it, I know I was joking about it, but it really doesn't smell down there and it used to, which is a terrible thing. So it's kind of nice. New lighting in our gym, which is important for many different safety reasons. Uh, the big downfall on the gym lights has been that they're either on or off. Mm -hmm. There's no dimming. But what else? Dimming. 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 Um, no, but they're, they're super bright and um, <laughs> what's that? Mood lighting, in the gym. Mood lighting in the gym is always helpful for PE. It is. <laughs> Cafeteria has been a great space. Um, the addition of the, the pillars, the seating around the pillars has been great for students. We have some low seating around pillars. We have some high seating around pillars. We've got some new tables. Years ago, we used to have those like really long tables, um, which wasn't necessarily great for conversation. It was great for the two people across from you, but socially not for a group. So I really love the circular configuration. I think like I actually see kids being kids and it's, um, it's awesome to see. And the, the brighter colors are definitely an add-on. Our kitchen area, you can talk more about the, the freezer and all of that stuff that was purchased, but our servery is um, fluid and perfect. It's really nice. Want to talk freezer and a cooler. <laughs> <laughs> and a kitchen ramp makes, things, uh, makes it easier for delivery to come in and out. So that's 
where we are. Thank you. Yes, sir. So one of the things that Ms. Zedens touched upon, but what in the biggest points of pride with this project, the 2017, is the amount of stakeholder input that we received in planning it. So our teachers had a lot of participation. She talked about Mrs. Lambert in here. Really, she was with the architects going through the program, outlining furniture, really had a strong voice in, in designing the project. Same with Mr. Ogden in the, in the new science room, for instance. So that was a point of pride in, in building this really multi-year <coughs> plan with, uh, with um, significant input from, from different stakeholder groups. So the next phase is the 2021-22 capital uh, improvement project. So that's one of our annual appropriations using capital reserves. You can see what we achieved um, in this. Um, this is mostly the roof. And you see from the picture, we touched almost every square foot of, of this roof. Uh, what I've highlighted or asked our architects to highlight is some of the sustainability um, efforts that were made. Every, every capital project, we challenge our architect team to at least give us options for sustainability improvement. So with the roof, um, they talk about um, the insulation, they talk about um, you know, reducing landfill, um, so you can see some of the things up there. But that is something that we're committed to in each capital project is seeing and making a business decision, you know, considering what the environmental impact is of, of the capital projects. So the roof was, uh, a, well, a much needed improvement. If you ask Mr. Luce, I think he accounted at one point in time, he was up to 43 buckets of, you know, that he had around this building over the last several years with uh, leaky, leaky parts in the roof. Uh, I think 43 was the number, but he was, we did this for him and then he, he graduated up to the high school. So, <laughs> so then 22-23 again is waiting approval with uh, uh, the state education department, but you can see what we prioritized in here, um, focusing on the boiler replacement and domestic hot water. And again, same with this, we ask our engineers for improve our energy uh, consumption and the efficiency of the equipment. Uh, and we just put some highlights in there um, all the way through to the new upgrading and the pneumatic controls so we can have them on the variable frequency drives. Again, trying to reduce energy consumption and also the maintenance. Uh, upgrades in the equipment reduce the maintenance effort, reduce the footprint of the equipment that's there, reduce the amount of equipment as I talk with the pumps. Uh, all things that help our, our maintenance team keep things current and keep things uh, you know, working and uh, continuity of operations. So. With that, I'll invite Mrs. Edmonds back up to talk about her priorities. So I sent this <laughs> over to Lou, and I thought that maybe he would take my last bullet out from it, but he didn't because it was... <laughs> <laughs> Stakeholder <laughs> input. Right? So that's what I asked. I, I can't remember who I asked. I said, what else should I add to this list? I think it was um, the APs in the building, and they were like, underground parking garage. I said, okay, I'm going to put it on there. So not that I think that's really going to happen, but as you know, parking is, is a nightmare, um, and drop-off is a nightmare at the middle school just because of the way that we're landlocked. Um, so take that out in jest, but really uh, in terms of, you know, priorities for the future, the first two, I would say from my standpoint, I know, I think I've talked to you about this before. Those are my two priorities for the building with the first one really being like, if there's one thing that we can take away from this, number one is the absolute most important. The idea of a secure entry, single point of entry for the middle school is huge. We do have wonderfully amazing security. We have wonderfully amazing uh, attendance clerical staff who do a great job of monitoring who's coming in and out of the building. But um, more than anything, we really need to have a more secure point of entry, preferably with like a dual door operating system where, you know, parents or visitors are let in um, and they don't get through that second door until they've shown their ID and gone through our Raptor system and, and all of that. So to me, that's number one and, and the major priority. Um, going along with that, as you know, currently our main office is on the, the second floor, really the third floor. Um, and what we'd like to do is kind of bring that down to the main uh, floor, the main level, so that when visitors do come in, they're coming right into that main office to um, clerical staff, to administration right off the bat. Uh, and then that leaves us upstairs for being more of a counseling suite and um, potentially a makerspace area with, with that change in space. Um, we are a little light in terms of the space that we have to support students who are in different levels of need on any given day. Um, and so it would be nice to just have bigger, a bigger space and more options, both for group uh, work, but also for the individual counseling that occurs. 
Some of the things that are listed on here are also gathered through input with Neil, who is our um, head custodian. So he talks about the importance of uh, some lighting and flooring being updated throughout the building. I mean, the reality is the colors on the floor are a nice 1980s mauve mm -hmm. and, and teal. Um, but in what's really more important is that there are areas where the floor is not level, where there's some cracking, um, and, and we can do some updating of those. The same thing for exit doors. Uh, it's, it's, it's not necessarily that they're broken, but as things age, they just don't latch as tightly or as securely as they need to, and we're constantly you know, doing little fixes here and there to make sure that everything is locked and safe. So looking at um, ways to, to better um, secure our, our doors is gonna be important. We have a couple of classrooms that don't currently have windows in them. They have two points of egress, so uh, they're safe in that regard, but they don't have windows. So if there's ever an opportunity um, to get some exterior lighting in some of those rooms, I don't know how possible that will be with some of the things in the scope of the project, but that's important for us. Uh, the windows on the Winton Road side really all need to be waterproofed at this point because they're, they're leaking quite a bit. And um, our elevators are constantly being serviced. And that's, I know that's a big, big project, but we do, we had one elevator that was down and out for, for a little bit of time. So um, we've got to make sure obviously for students that um, they're functioning and, and working well. So those are kind of the necessary pieces. We've talked about renovating the fax classrooms before, particularly the kitchen area more than anything else. Um, to make sure that we're up to par with ADA compliance and, and regulations, um, but also to modernize the kitchen area and the access to, um, to ovens and stoves that, that students um, can work with more efficiently and effectively. And let's see. The auditorium at this point, um, we're lucky enough to have the beautiful auditorium at the high school, and so that's kind of become our flagship place for events, which allows us some leverage in terms of what we do with the auditorium. It's not fully functioning at this point uh, for a variety of reasons, so we've talked about the potential of making it a kind of large group space, maybe like a black box theater that has multiple functions. So if we do have musical groups that want to perform in there or acting groups that want to perform in there, they can. But if we also need to have assemblies and, and large group instruction, we could use that as well. We don't have a room like 262 at the high school where we can fit, you know, 100, 200, 300 kids in, in easily. Um, so looking at that as an, as an opportunity. So those are kind of our big priorities. I know it's a, it's a big ask, there's a lot. We know it's not all gonna happen at once, but those are all things that are on our radar for, for the future, for bettering our building. Um, I'll just say first, thanks for hosting us tonight. Um, we love getting out to the buildings. This is a bright, great space. So um, we're thankful to, to be in here. So thank you for that. Great list. I'll, I'll make a note that projects like um, roofs and things like that aren't only sexy but 43 buckets around the school isn't great either with dirty ceiling tiles and things like that so there was a 100%. lot of work done on that roof mm -hmm. um, lou and the team had to do a lot of chasing with some of those folks to make sure that it got done correctly and it, some of that work was in some pretty inclement weather but they stuck to it so it feels great to have a watertight building at least on the top and as you pointed out with the potential for changing windows we'll work on the side of that as well but um, school's looking great, so thank you. Comments or questions from the rest of the board? Thank you. So just one last closing remark is, we've been through each of the four buildings now, each of the principals have had the opportunity to talk about their priorities. We are um, working on prioritizing a larger capital project. You remember the slide I've been showing at every opportunity where we have an opportunity for investment, maybe close to $20 million. Um, so we're gonna work on those priorities um, to develop a plan within that budget. At the next, um, meeting we start talking about budget and we'll have our financial consultants there to give the board a better idea of where we are debt wise where we are for opportunity investment and capital so that'll be our next presentation in uh in the 17th okay, thanks. thank you yeah. uh next we'll start with uh principal reports and uh we're in the middle school so let's start with tom hall <laughs> Thank you, sir. I don't want to wreck anything up here. 
It is a beautiful library. I will say that. Principal at Edmonds. It's a beautiful library. Very comfy seats, too. Um, so yes, here we are back. The Link Crew. If you don't know what Link Crew is, basically it's a, it's a national organization of student leaders, juniors and seniors, mostly, who are the Link Crew leaders. And we have a chapter here at Brighton High School. We started about six years ago. Um, and student leaders apply. They're um, vetted through teachers, counselors, and their advisors, Mr. and Mrs. Bonadonna and chosen to be student leaders to welcome our freshmen uh, into the high school. And they also work with our freshman students on a weekly basis during Link Crew seminars. And this happened to go through during FLEX, our Link Crew leaders um, get together with their advisors to learn what the next um, lessons are going to be for the next session for the freshmen. And coming together, they have to ask questions, they preview what they're going to be teaching, and uh, are prepared basically for the next uh, uh, lesson with the freshmen, and that will end um, next week, and then it will be over for the first semester, and then second semester, freshmen will start seminars with counselors. Um, our leadership blood drive. So the, the blood drives at the high school um, used to happen even when I was a teacher here back in the 90s and early 2000s, and all of a sudden it stopped. And we usually did them during the school day. Very few students could could donate because of their age, or if they did, they'd pass out, stuff like that, you know, and their parents weren't there, so it was really difficult. We maybe collected 15 to 18 um, uh, pints Pint. of blood, yeah. and that was, you know, that was a pretty good year. But our leadership crew since uh, December of 2012 has now accumulated 989 pints of blood mm -hmm. since 2012, December, all started by a student in our leadership class, um, taught by Mr. Kantz, and he's been in all the blood drives since then. We do them all on Saturdays now, and they they took in 58 pints on this particular blood drive wow. in mid-December. So we've gone from 15 to 18 to 58, and they're hoping to bust 1,000 uh, in May when they do it again in 2023. So I challenge any of you who can donate, please come out. It's a great time, and uh, the kids just enjoy seeing you get you know, hunkered down on the table and poked with a needle. And it's for a great cause, of course. Our Friends of Rachel Club, uh, service club at the high school, does all sorts of service and fun things during the year, invite students who are in Friends of Rachel, as well as um, the members themselves. Cookie making party, they decorated over eight dozen cookies and then ate them all. <laughs> Close to it. Anyway. But several students out, they, uh, Mr. Mitchell provided the cookies and they decorated their own and then took them with them after the event. But just a nice thing just before the holidays. Also, the sounds of the season, um, you know, pre-COVID things were wide in existence. We had students performing. Thank you to Dr. Lauber and our music teachers, but she helped organize it. Vocal groups, instrumental groups during passing time. You could find them in all floors of the building, singing, playing in between classes on that uh, Thursday before break. We also brought out our faculty um, band, play some holiday tunes prior to the day starting. And we got that more cowbell guy over there. <laughs> the world always needs more cowbells. <laughs> it's just a lot of fun. Um, but that was, it was nice to bring it all back. So did I. And I was in the hallway up near the library, and this was one of the a cappella groups singing, passing time, kids standing, watching, just a lot of fun and, and, and smiles. And then all of a sudden, I got a picture of this guy. <laughs> you know who that is, um, and uh, one of our cleaners. So just it was a fun time just before the break, and and just it, you know it was, it was a great way to send us off into the December vacation. Oops. There we go. Technology. Um, we have electronics robotics course. It's been in existence for several years now, um, and they were at the they're getting towards the end of the semester course. So they're actually in the midst of testing their robots that they built as part of this. And this particular student had to design a robot that would, that they control with a remote control, program it. They have to take the ball off of the stick without knocking the stick down. And that's the challenge. So they compete. Um, it's kind of like a precursor to any students who might be involved in or want to get involved in robotics uh, down the road um, and a lot of fun. Our senior athletic signings are just up and starting. This is our first one just before the break with these four lovely students uh, with um, scholarships to go off and play at various colleges with various sports. Um, there was a nice write-up, thanks to Dan Goldman and the paper, but uh, to Mingna, Celia, 
Sophia and Elise, uh, congrats to them. In the new year, the <laughs> Bruin is here. There it is. We um, collected applications. Uh, we're going to be um, interviewing and then having students try out to wear this Bruin costume at a variety of events. It appears we have kind of a small number of student uh, interest. They want the mascot to be at the contest, but I'm hearing nobody wants to really jump into the costume. So I open it up. We're probably going to have a lot of adult guests guests uh, taking part, and it's I've been, a, um, working on my audition video actually. Oh. Oh. Thursday at three o'clock in room two sixty two. That's that's both scary and awful. Yeah. Thursday, three o'clock in room two sixty two are the tryouts. Nate, Mr. Merritt, myself, Ms. Dr. Glazer, uh, the APs, myself, we're going to be you know hearing from the kids and seeing what they have to bring. But we're pretty excited about it. Um, Part of our blueprint initiatives, talking about mental health and wellness, uh, this presentation, we started a new partnership with Strong Behavioral Health. Uh, thank you to all the people, Deanna in particular and Caitlin, um, who helped. What's Caitlin's new name? Feeny. Feeny. Caitlin Feeney, who just uh, was, got married over the weekend. Um, appreciate them bringing in Strong. And basically, we have satellite mental health clinics in the high school. Um, that service middle school and high school students, but that's something new for us this year, reaching out to families who maybe can't transport students to appointments and they're at a higher need, they can do it right here now in the school, and it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, we've continued with our Bravona lessons that start at the middle school. Um, our students will be getting them in the middle school and then in the high school each grade level as we go through the years, but for the high school that was new for us this year. We continue with our DASA Bright and Believe presentations, but because of what Bavona does, we overlapped a lot with social media, um, sexting, uh, uh, you know, appropriate touching, those sort of things at the, at the high school level. But because we overlap so much, we're actually changing up our presentation and doing more scenario-based things. So we're presenting them with, this is a real life scenario that has happened with our students here in Brighton. We don't provide the names, of course, but here's the scenario. What would you do if you were ever involved in this or see, seen it happening. Um, if you ever watched that Jim, uh, James Cagnone special on ABC, what would you do? Yeah. That's kind of how we set it up. We don't have the wonderful you know, actors and things, but yeah. we set up this scenario and the kids have to talk us through, and then we work with them. Counselors, administrators are doing that together. Dangers of vaping, we continue to, we're starting a big campaign of that in the spring starting up. Counseling groups are well underway. We have almost 60 students from the ninth grade class and 35 to 45 in the other grade levels right now. So that's quite a few students who will meet with counselors and groups. One-on-one -on -one counseling continues, restorative practices, we're full go, doing more mediations than we have ever done at this time of the year, even prior to last year. Um, takes a lot of work, but it certainly shows, a lot, it, uh, gives us a lot of um, positive uh, dividends in the end. One thing I'm working on with Stacy Kugel, and I think we'll be sharing that with Danielle as well, all those different platforms that parents have and communicating with parents about how to stay involved with their students' education, we're going to be rolling out a parent education guide on just the basic technology tools that you need to know as a parent or should know from the biggest priority to you know maybe something minor like Schoology, um, but school tool, uh, parent square, those sort of things, and just trying to be as clear and succinct as possible. And I'm gonna have some parents preview that prior to sending it out. Um, we're continuing to look at the panorama data and uh, how we're going to make changes to that with our school-based equity teams and our teachers have looked at that and our students in culture climate leadership team are looking at that as well. Um, I'll just bring attention. We have a lot of musical things happening in the month of January. We do have an asynchronous day on that Friday, January 27th. No classes, but uh, asynchronous learning happening at home. And we're bringing back the winter semi-formal dance at the end of January. Uh, no midterms, but we'll wrap up the quarter on February 1st. Any questions? A lot happening as always. Mm -hmm. Questions from the board? No? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Principal Tappan. Thanks, Tom. Thank Welcome. you, Tom. Good evening and happy new year. All right. 
So uh, a lot has been happening uh, at Council Rock since last I was able to present to you. So the alternative uh, program at BOCES at Creekside uh, actually came into the steel drum ensemble performance for our second graders. It was like so inspirational. So our second graders, first of all, um, I think everyone got something out of this. Um, they taught us about how steel drums, where they came from. They taught us about how they are made. We talked about the price of them. That was particularly interesting to the second graders. But then they played a whole bunch of popular music that the students sang along to. Kids were encouraged to sing. The faces on these, I think they were all boys, but the, the group that was performing loved it as much as our second graders, uh, as much as they enjoyed it. Um, and that was put together by their music therapist who works with them, um, but it was really, really great. Um, and our music teachers, uh, Mrs. Granat and Ms. Davis. So um, it was a real highlight in December, and we are hoping that they will come back for Black History Month to do it for our entire school. Um, we were getting on their schedule, so we're really excited about that. As you walked around our building in December, um, traditions were celebrated across the board, and I think what was most striking to me um, this particular class is Miss Bennett's first grade class, but the amount of different ways that were celebrated and how kids celebrated, this was a combined um, writing assignment that Miss Bennett assigned to her students to go home and talk to their families about their traditions and where they came from. And as you walked up and down the hall, every single thing that I could think of was represented. And the kids enjoyed it, the families enjoyed it, um, and it really just was another uh, celebration of the diversity we have and the celebration uh, of how, how we're all different, but we have lots of things in common. So, um, And that was kind of across the board. These are um, other ways that we celebrated and sharing our own traditions. Um, kindergartners, if you guys remember, kindergartners uh, often did the study of light and how light is used through many different um, of the holidays. That continues kind of with a different twist. Uh, it combines with science to talk about the science of light, but also um, how light is used in many different celebrations. So many different celebrations are highlighted, um, talked about. They brought in guest speakers uh, to speak about uh, firsthand how these celebrations uh, use the light. And then remember the last time I presented to you, it wasn't Thanksgiving yet. So a lot of thankful writing talking about how students um, are thankful. Uh, the last week of school, a lot of creative ways that teachers continue to motivate our young people to stay engaged in learning. Um, so holiday themed centers. Um, so this is an example from Mrs. Aiello's class. Lots of parent volunteers coming in, um, but continuing to do math while mixing in some fun and arts and crafts uh, in celebration. So just really great to see kids enjoying themselves, but staying engaged in the learning right up until the very end. Uh, last time I talked about Mrs. Youngman's class uh, who organized the voting uh, and the election during the election day. They also worked on If I Were the President. Um, and as I walked and read, I would like some of them to be the president. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they have incredible ideas uh, and they will represent us well someday. Um, and they then also presented them to the families. Uh, students or parents were able to come in um, and students stood at a podium learning public speaking skills um, and delivering their addresses uh, as would-be presidents. First graders uh, across the board examined family and looked at um, the idea of what family is. And again, looking at the different representations of what family can be was really special to see all the different um, you know, ways that a family can be defined. Um, and it was, it was great to see that. And then I'm going to finish uh, the general part of my report. So this is Makerspace Part 3. So if you remember, we as adults uh, did a Makerspace activity, and then we shared it with the students uh, in a very public way. This is kind of phase three of that. This is Mrs. Baker's class um, who came in with Mrs. Fallon uh, and Mrs. Baker and did the exact same assignment, uh, except that they created a class family book. 
Um, and you can see students really looking and examining their own faces, understanding what makes them unique, what makes them special, uh, and building those. Um, and they will have a book just like we have as a staff. And so far, I believe we have about 10 classes that have gone in uh, to do this to give those students um, that same experience. And Mrs. Fallon just continues to invite more and more kids in to, to understand the, the habits of mind through the Hab Lab. So it's really exciting. As Dr. Hall mentioned, um, we as principals are focusing a little bit on each kind of different parts of the blueprint. So this month we are focusing on uh, mental health and wellness. So we at Council Rock continue to use, um, so these are some pictures in action. Uh, we continue to use restorative circles um, in our daily meetings um, in that format. Uh, on the right, you can see Dana Peterson, one of our counselors, um, teaching a second step lesson in a kindergarten class. Um, that happens once a cycle. This is outside of our ENL classroom. Lori Moulton um, has a feelings chart um, to teach students who are learning English, but it also really helps all of us um, what it might look like if you're tired, sad, happy, learning about those emotions, um, what it looks like when it comes to the surface. Um, and uh, it's just a great, great idea of that. Uh, and then something that we've kind of informally, but it's taken off. Um, when I first got to Council Rock, so 11 years ago, kind of the norm was you come in and you get your morning bell work or your morning kind of warm up, and it usually was very academic. It was always a struggle, and the team started talking about it because the students who got there earliest got to kind of finish it. The students whose buses were late or maybe they got dropped off late would never be able to finish, and then it would like kind of carry over, and, and it stressed some kids out. So we've talked really about kind of a soft opening in terms of engaging kids in critical thinking, um, so some of the building, some of the learning through play. And this is happening across the, the board. We have less students who are anxious about coming to school, kind of needing to like get that started. This is like a soft way to enter. So as you walk through our halls um, from about 8.20 until about 8.35, you'll see a lot of classes um, doing some of these incredible activities. Students fully engaged, doing a lot of learning, um, but also having a lot of fun while they're doing it, and then kind of launching into their day. So as I walked around, this just struck me as something that we've really looked at over the last few years. And then upcoming events. Uh, so first grade movie night is set for Friday the 13th. Hopefully that's not a sign, but it's Toy Story 4 um, from 6 to 7.40. Doors open at 5.30, and then the movie runs from 6 to 7.40. The kindergarten was such a great success. I'm looking forward to what first grade uh, has to offer. No school on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, we do have a PTSA meeting with the principal Wednesday the 18th. And then on the 19th is our incoming kindergarten information night, so for the class of 2036. So not to be confused with current kindergartners. That's not for people who are currently in kindergarten. So Ms. Hatch, it's not for you. It's for those who will be coming. I mean, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> uh, so we will uh, take people through the registration process at the Council Rock Cafetorium um, and kind of go through the timeline of those incoming fre uh, kindergartners, not freshmen. And then, as Dr. Hall mentioned, an independent learning day. And I say that only because it is no in-person school. School will still continue to take place, just not within our four walls. Um, if students will continue to be learning. Oh, dear. What did I do? Uh-oh. And questions. So as a, as a point of clarity, the movie is not Friday the 13th. Correct. The movie is on Friday the 13th. Oh, it's Correct. Toy Story 4. Correct. Good, good. good. good distinction, yeah. Board President Davis. Yes. Any other questions from board? Thank you very much. Principal Evans. Nope. Hold on. I'm finding it. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Bill reminded me to speak in a mic, and I'm like, me? Not loud enough? <laughs> but that's new. All right. So this, well, the past month, actually 2022, uh, was the partnership, the partnership together with Mod Eeen. I always mispronounce that, but the teachers come from Israel, came for a visit. This is Mayan. 
She's a PE teacher. Um, you work, so the purpose is to work together to build common goals um, and joint activities with the, with the intention to teach each other about each other's culture. We had a magnificent time with her. Um, we actually are going to connect with our student counselor. She's going to get students in her class as well. There's a big time difference, but apparently they'll come back to school so we can Zoom together. Um, and when they came to visit, that was the chamber orchestra under the direction of Ms. Isham and uh, Ms. Ma's class. Their class did a welcome for all of the participants from Israel. December was also concert time. We had the red band, obviously with the red blazer. That's how you know that was red band orchestra um, performed in December. Winter Wonderland around the building. Um, the first picture you see in the globes, it was about if students were stuck in a globe, what would, what would happen and what would they do? Um, and then the snowflakes um, represent the different in their own, your own identity that you're beautiful in your own way. And then the last picture over here was a story of the woolly, woolly hat. And it's about that students are special even without their hat. And the students wrote about what makes them special, all the different characteristics, and then they actually created hats to go with it. Of course, it was holiday time, so around the building you see different holiday traditions. That was a uh, third grade's class, um, keep the keeping quilt. So there are different traditions that they drew pictures and they talked about what their families, how their families celebrate the different holidays, um, as well as the other picture as well on the other side uh, was about family traditions around the holidays as well. And then some other learning around the building, those are ESS. Those are autobiographical life maps from fourth grade. And on the other side, they were learning about the three branches of government in one of our fifth grade classes. Our makerspace is definitely taking off. Thank you, Dr. Rio. We're able to order some new things that's going to be coming in. These are classes that are creating projects using the materials that we currently have. This is a fifth grade class. Um, one of our fourth grade classes actually are creating projects around their science unit, um, around uh, animal characteristics, I guess how they communicate, and then they're creating videos around that. So we're very excited about the makerspace and how it's coming alive. Now to the priority area of mental health and wellness. Our mental health teams are continuing to meet. We have a wonderful collaboration with the anti-racist curriculum, and with that, um, Keisha is actually working with the mental health team to revise their social justice lessons. Um, um, and also we're doing restorative circles. We have our brewing time and of course primary project. Here's just some pictures of sensory walks, uh, mindfulness uh, bulletin board, and then we have two little chairs that are new. You would think so what is little chairs. The kids are enjoying coming to sit while they're waiting to meet with their counselor and their mental health provider. And lastly, for one of the, no, nope, not lastly, after this video, we have a wonderful partnership with Pediatric uh, Behavioral Health and Wellness. It's a school-based consultation service um, through Golisano Children's Hospital, where they're able to provide consultations to not only to our teachers to help with students, but also to our mental health staff. Now, this video, I want to say it was created just for today, but it wasn't. Um, it was for one of our meeting with the, with the principals about what happens when you, with our counselors, what's the purpose of our mental health team. So I'm just going to share a few minutes of it. The first student, you're going to have a hard time hearing because he was very low, but the rest of them you should be able to hear. Uh-oh, it's not showing up there. Tech help. All right. Thank you.
So I won't play the entire video, but then it goes into talk about what happens at Bruin Time. And this month, I do have the upcoming events. Mm -hmm. So committee me meetings, um, ELA and Social Studies is January 4th. Uh, we have our Multicultural Club that's meeting on the 9th. We have our Math and Science Committee meeting next Monday. Of course, third grade bingo, which has been a hit. Um, the kids love bingo. We have our school-based equity team, January 12th. Fourth grade bingo, the week of the 19th. Uh, meeting with the principal, actually, Bavona is going to come in and actually talk about um, the Bavona lessons that our um, health teacher will be providing. And then more choir and chamber orchestra to round off um, January. Any questions? Very busy month, last month and this month. Yeah. Good for you, school. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for trying. Danielle. Uh oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. To talk, talk about under, underground parking room? Yeah. 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 Really, I've been sketching it out <laughs> while we've been while I've been waiting. I think I have a plan. Um, I want I, I'm starting also with uh, visits from our peers in Israel. Noga came and spent a day with us and spent a day uh, at BHS and it was an amazing day. Um, I, I, I felt like I was like beaming with pride as I walked through the building and just we had a nice schedule for her but as we were walking through I was like wait hold on I want to show you the greenhouse wait hold on I want to show you this wait I want you to see this person like it was really really fun to spend a day showing off all the amazing things that we're doing um, we also had an opportunity the picture on the right all those students had lunch um, with Noga and myself and our fax students actually prepared the lunch they made uh, pizzas and cake in facts and so they put on a really nice spread for her and she shared some information about what schooling is like in her school and then they had an opportunity to share uh, the things that they love about TCMS with her so that was also really nice to hear kids talk about the things that make them feel great uh, number one thing that they said every every student said my teachers my teachers my teachers my teachers my teachers so that was fantastic to hear and then the number two thing was uh, sports and clubs yeah. So uh, that I feel like you know we're doing things well and when, when students can articulate that those are the things that are making them feel good about our building. So that was fantastic. And um, as I said, we had a nice schedule for her. So she was able to see some of our performing groups in action. She's a science teacher. So we brought her through Ms. Padilla's room. She watched a lesson on um, chromatography and she went to a, a sixth grade science class. She also went to Katie Falter's classroom and spent some time there talking with students because, of course, Katie is going over to Israel 
in February. Um, so that was nice to hook them up. She also got to see, I'll show you some pictures later, but she went uh, in Ms. Walter's room. The students were making their gingerbread houses in German. So she sat with them and worked with them as they were creating those. So it was a really a great day for her. I think she was exhausted. She finished the day at three o'clock with our book club uh, around environmental impact that she was able to join. So we definitely made her uh, keep busy throughout the day. But as I said, I couldn't have been more proud of the day. And then, all right, I need some help. Let's see if I can get this. Do I have to just extend it if I'm trying to show a video here? Do that. So uh, the first class that we took her to was um, Ms. Cucciarelli's sixth grade or uh, chorus class. And they performed a song that they had learned in Hebrew for her. And they, it's beautiful. I'm going to play it in a second. But what was awesome was that they stopped and they asked her for feedback on, on their accent and their dialect and, and how well they were pronouncing the words. Um, so it was great to hear them go back and forth. And hopefully this will work. That's just a little bit of what she was able to see. They're amazing, aren't they? They're so great. Ms. Cucciarelli has done an amazing job with them. And uh, what was really cool is she stayed for a while and they interacted with each other. And then about half of the group got up and left to go to their other performing group because it was the day they were supposed to be with them. So, And she said, she shared with our students that they don't have any performing groups in her school at all. So the fact that we have students, you know, we have 92 students in our sixth grade band and that students can do more than one, participate in more than one performing group, she was floored. And the kids were too to realize that like what they have is not what everybody else has, the experience. So that was a great start to our day. Um, as I said, a wonderful visit all around. And I just love when I struggle with the technology. That brings us all to, con to concert season. So like French Road, we had all of our concerts take place in December. Uh, some of them at Fres, thank you for hosting us. And some of them, of course, at our middle school. And as I said, 92 students in our sixth grade band. It's just amazing the numbers that we have and what they can do so quickly and so early in the year. And I think um, that it was Ms. Lamb who said these sixth graders first learned how to play an instrument online through COVID. So the fact that they were able to come together and you know, just a, a, a year after kind of finally being together and perform the way that they did, all of the groups, it's just amazing. I love, I love seeing them in action. So we had all of our groups performing. Here are some of the gingerbread houses that I talked with you about. They had a big voting. Um, and I think the one on the right wound up number six, I think, is the one that actually won the competition. And we had, in the week before vacation, we had the Rochester Fencing Group come in and work with our students in PE class. So that's one of the, the neat things. There's so many great things about our PE teachers, but they, uh, they never kind of stick with the status quo. They're always thinking of new ways to get students involved. And you'll see a lot on Instagram. They're bowling. They're doing all sorts of things that we never did when we were in school. Um, to keep students active and so bringing in the Rochester Fencing Club and and having the students participate You could see their faces like they just had so much fun with those foam uh, You know, what are they called noodles or whatever they are practicing with each other So always looking to to meet students where they are and get them engaged and exciting 
And then the other side of that is going through the classrooms, and we have quite a few teachers right now whose, um, whose APPR goal is around visible thinking strategies. And I know we have some math teachers who are doing a book study on visible thinking in the math classroom, and they just changed the entire setup of their classroom physically so that they can engage students more with whiteboards and being up and showing their thinking as they walk through math problems and math equations. And then this is an example from Mrs. Parks's classroom where she had students, they were preparing for uh, an exam on ancient civilizations and she had them go through a lesson where uh, they had to write down everything they could remember from the lesson. And then she had them meet with other students and they all kind of shared and they underlined and circled new thinking that something that they didn't write that a partner wrote down and vice versa. And then they came together and they had to make a visualization of all of their key concepts. And then they had to present it to other students and they did a gallery walk. So these are the kinds of things that we're seeing in classrooms. Like students are not sitting by and just receptacles that are having information thrown into them. They're making meaning, they're engaging, they're up. And this is all around the work that uh, Maria Hewitt has done. Um, Rio and also uh, Julie Kopp. So it, it's great to see it taking off in social studies classrooms. We, our sixth grade ELE team is also working on incorporating uh, visible thinking strategies into, um, into their unit studies of, of literature. So it's, I, I don't know, like I've, I've seen all that work over the years, so it's really cool to see it in action in class and to know that it, it, visible thinking allows every student an entry point to the content no matter where they are. So it doesn't matter if you know they're an advanced learner or a student who may be struggling with some concepts, it allows every student an entry point and to be able to participate. I'm so proud of the work that the teachers are doing around that, it's great. We have uh, Mr. Elkins, who is a new uh, technology teacher with us. He's teaching eighth grade technology this year. If you remember, Alex Elkins was a student here years ago. Um, I taught him when he was in eighth grade. I don't feel old at all. Um, but anyway, he is, it's, it's been really awesome to work with him as he works through his projects because um, he can articulate so clearly how every single lesson builds on the previous lesson. And so with this, this was a lesson where students were just, just learning how to dabble with um, the CAD software. And they, were, they, they went and they picked just a design, an icon that they liked, and they had to figure out how to, de to design it in the CAD software. And then they have, this is like really thin plywood, um, but they were able to um, print it using the laser printer. And now all of that work that they used with the, the design software, they're gonna apply to their um, CO2 cars that they make. So like building on each step, he's adding one step in each lesson. And what's really important with him is that students always have something to walk away with. He feels it's really important that they're not just dabbling in the software and learning these skills, but that there's a tangible piece that they walk out with, even if it's just something that the, the laser printer or, the, um, or something else that's you know, printed in five minutes. He always wants them to walk away with something tangible. But I've really enjoyed, because technology is not my world at all, like you know, that kind of technology. Um, I've enjoyed watching how he sequences his, his lessons and gives students the hands-on opportunities. Of course, we had our holiday festivities. Um, you probably saw our flash mob and uh, you know another shout out to Jess Padilla. That was all her. She begged me last year in December to do it and I, at that time I just said, Jess, I just can't. Like, I can't take on something else right at this point. Please don't do it yet. So she was relentless and came back this year and she got teachers involved and students involved and uh, so fun, so, so fun for everybody. But we also had a little holiday competition in our building um, where teachers could uh, do all these different challenges and earn points and then there was a winner. Jess Padilla was the winner. Um, so she decorated my office. That's what, that was one of the challenges was to like decorate somebody's desk. Every day I came in that week, there was something else on, on my desk that she decorated. They had to take pictures, like a silly picture with a colleague, with Brian Darling. They had to dance, do a dance, like a TikTok dance and videotape themselves with students. So just all things like that. Um, and we had quite a few teachers who really had a lot of fun with it, but Jess went you know, above and beyond, so super fun. Mental health and wellness, I've talked to you a ton about our WIN and SEL Wednesdays. We're continuing to gather student input on what those exactly should look like. 
all student input has been really, really super positive and staff about the, having the homeroom at the beginning of the day and um, win with the same group of people and same teacher at the end of the day. Uh, the teachers and students really like that bookend, a nice way to ease into the day and ease out of the day. We're still um, working on fine-tuning SEL Wednesdays. We're looking on what the right day is because some, some people don't exactly like it on Wednesday because they feel like there's academics that need to get taken care of. Some people want it on Friday. Some people want it on Monday. Uh, so we're still kind of working through that. The group that has worked to, our ad hoc group that's worked to design all of this is meeting again at the end of this month. Um, Ms. Paddock's also meeting with a group of students to get additional feedback uh, on things like, should eighth grade SEL lessons look different than sixth grade SEL lessons? And if so, how different should they look? Who's gonna design them? Are students interested in playing a part in designing them? So we continue to evolve in that. We feel like we've got a good thing. We're just gonna make tweaks to it. Um, I talked with sixth graders today and I told them, I said, when an SEL came out of our panorama survey results, from the spring that we knew we wanted to see higher levels of student connectedness and positive feelings about our culture. So, you know, we talked about the importance of, of being honest on those surveys because a few of the kids were like, I just go through and click anything. And I said, well, don't do that because we actually use the results. Um, so they did another one in uh, the fall and I was super happy to say that those scores did go up from the spring quite a bit and will continue to hopefully grow in that area. We're continuing with our weekly What's the Bruin doing? So every week every week we recognize a teacher who has done something uh, above and, and beyond, and we recognize them in, in the building. We have our counselors supporting the Bavona lessons, like at the high school. Our counseling groups are up and running. Social workers are involved in those as well. We have developed um, protocols to allow for community building at all building level meetings, whether it's a team leader meeting, a faculty meeting, uh, principal advisory committee meeting. We always have some sort of community building built in. We had our holiday party and scavenger hunt. Um, the the uh, student union is, did candy grams, uh, which was really nice to see the kind things that students wrote to each other. And they're also working on right now, they're starting spirit days that will go all throughout the rest of the year. And they've created like a student passport book that for each day that they de they dress up for a student um, spirit day, they get a check and then they'll get prizes for you know whoever's compete you know whoever has participated in the most spirit days. Uh, teachers are invited to do that as well. We've added some committees that we haven't had at the middle school, so the principals advisory committee and the culture and climate committee, which has allowed for um, more parent and student voice in what we're doing. Um, I've talked to you a ton about MTSS and all of the work that we're doing there. Cookie exchange uh, with the faculty was great. And then of course our flash mob. So all of those things are helping with both student and staff mental health and wellness. January's Poverty Awareness Month, we're looking at um, the possibility of doing a shoe donation for this month, um, where we are working with an organization that collects shoes and repurposes them um, to, to families in need. Um, but we're just exploring that at this point. We have some of our basic meetings. PTSA meeting with the principal is next week. School-based equity on the 12th. Uh, Solo Fest is on the 21st. We have our pizza and jazz district-wide on the 24th, but it is that time where on the 24th is also our 506 parent orientation, so incoming sixth graders. And then uh, our 809 at the high school is on the 26th. We have an activity night coming up, and January's gonna go quickly. I can't believe that it's January already. It is, and as with the other schools, just a ton of activities. Thank you again, by the way, for hosting us tonight. We're glad to be able to be here. So uh, questions for Danielle? Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, we now have some first read policies to go through. I'll, uh, I'll first list them, then I'll call for a motion to approve. We'll have a discussion, and then we'll take a vote. So approval for a first read for three different policies, policy 8110, instruction, curriculum development, resources, and evaluation, policy 8320, instruction, textbooks, library materials, and other instructional materials, and policy 8330, instruction, objection to instructional materials and controversial issues. So we'll first do a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Karen. Second. Seconded by Sue. 
discussion. Um, Dr. McGowan, do you want to uh, lead off with a couple of comments? We'll see if there's questions from the board. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sure. Uh, these all three are being recommended by the Erie One Policy Service to be updated, really to clarify definitions with each policy. Uh, this is certainly an issue that uh, school districts boards are facing across the country, and they've recommended language to simply clarify uh, exactly how materials are chosen, what the definitions for, for example, controversial issues may be, and what the uh, process would be to oppose those, appeal those, and then clarify that for folks. So. Uh, we're taking a look at the language internally as well and uh, may have some modifications to further clarify uh, how one makes that objection and then what the appeal process would look like around that once a decision is made and uh, certainly may make revisions and suggestions to you before the second read. Um, to your point, this is a first read. We'll have a second read and approval on the 17th, which is two weeks from today. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. McGowan in regards to the first read? It's not a question, but a comment. I think that this is a these are nicely fleshed out, um, especially in comparison to how the policies read now. I think it's important that they um, be updated, but also just be more um, explicit mm -hmm. about how we make commitment decisions. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I would say just uh, for clarity that anybody who may be reading about this afterwards or viewing this now, this is not in response to a particular review. A particular issue, nor is it a desire to change what our approach has been, but to further clarify that. And and frankly, the board has been very supportive of uh, children having access to materials in school. That uh, and this hasn't been a place where there has been a uh, what I would describe as a significant issue around materials. We've had conversations with folks before, and I say respectfully that we've had dis discussions and even disagreements over materials, but that. Uh, the district has been, I think, very supportive. Our librarians and teachers have felt that way as well. So uh, in no way is this a policy direction looking to limit the materials that kids have access to, but rather to provide further definition. So thank you. I will also note that it, uh, we remain uh, open and welcome to feedback for people to air their points of view in a respectful manner, of course. Other questions? Again, this is the first read. We'll have the opportunity to vote on this for a second read as well on the 17th. Um, we do have a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, finally, for the consent agenda, I don't know how late Chipotle is open. However, uh, the Brighton Boys Swimming and Diving Booster Club is doing a meal there tonight, if you happen to get over there right after this. Um, and also, the Senior Student Council um, has a Chipotle event, but that's on March 8th, so you can put that on your calendars now if you want to grab a lunch or dinner there. Also, I've been here a field trip approval, which was the model UN trip to Syracuse, which we know, by the way, was successful. That was in December, just didn't fall right with our meetings. Um, motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Moved by Eleanor? Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other topics or items for the good of the order? I will make note that this is, as I said, our fourth school trip, and we are always grateful for the, the tech support team, which includes Mike over my shoulder, <laughs> Bill over here to my left, and our student uh, uh, volunteer who has agreed to help out tonight, Evelyn, modeling some great Chuck Taylors, which were actually sneakers when I was young. Just want to note that. <laughs> Um, but want to thank all three of them because they do all the setup and then they do all the breakdown afterwards. So again, round of applause for them. Appreciate their work. Uh, motion to adjourn. Moved by Susan. Seconded by Karen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.